Hi everyone, welcome back to Chang's Chinese Classroom. This is Chang here. Today we're going to continue the second part of episode number one, the region of Chinese characters. I do hope you will still remember our caveman friend, Wu Ya. As time goes on, Wu Ya and I collected much more berries than in the past, so we need to start counting them. Then afterward, we need characters to represent these numbers. So we start to create it characters for the numbers. For number one, to us, it's quite simple. We just use one stroke, aka one slash on the wall to represent number one. Then with more numbers, we adopted this plus one principle to make more and more characters. So for number two, we use two stroke and number three with three instead. Okay. Then with more berries we collected, we found out we not only have the good ones, but also the bad ones. So we draw a simple line in between and separate them so we know which part is the good ones and which part is the bad taste ones. But also we do make symbols to remind us because after a few days we might forgot. So we decided we're going to use one horizontal line plus one vertical line together to represent the meaning above to remind us that the bottom part all these berries are good ones. Then opposite to that, we're going to use the same horizontal line with then one vertical below that to represent the meaning below and remind ourselves the one below the horizontal line are bad ones. That's how we created the character for these two. Also, similarly, we need to record the information where we get these berries. We already have the tree on the wall to represent the main tree, but we do need to remind us we climb from the bottom of the tree to the top to get these berries. Then, start from the bottom, we still use plus one principle. We only add one stroke at the bottom of the original character for tree to indicate that's the bottom of the tree. And then, similarly, could you think of how we get on top of the tree and record that character? Of course, we're so lazy we add another stroke on top of that to represent that's the top edge of the tree. That's where we get the berries. That's our destination. That's why, that's how we get these characters. And also for the last thing, don't forget to bring a knife to gather these berries. But again, uh, we are remind me that we need to record down the character for blade as we need to use this part to cut off the berries rather than the handle. So in, or, in order to do that, again, we add simply one stroke in here to indicate this part is the blade rather than the other part. That's how we created these characters. And afterward, we think this is a pretty good method we could just add simple strokes or symbols based on existing characters to create it much more. And these are what it looks like, which are quite similar to the original ones. Except for these two, we add extra two stroke, one here, one here, to make it more clear which direction we're referring to. So this is one major method for us to to create more characters, which we call it simple ideograms. As I explained, we use the existing picture with a little bit more symbols to create more meanings. Then, with much more characters we created on the wall, we start to forget what's the meaning of each of them. Now I think we are, and I, we already forgot the meaning of them all. Give me a few seconds, please. What's the meaning of these ones? Mm. Okay, the memory starts to grow back on me. I think I get the meaning of them. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Okay, the thing is, the other day when I'm not here, we I actually managed to create a bunch of new characters, these ones. And he claimed that he used a much more genius method than before. 
But the problem is he forgot how he created them. Now all I got are those hints. So I got two jobs. First is I need to match the meaning to these characters. And second is I need to figure out how Ouya managed to create these ones. Again, let me think about it. Mm. Hey, took a, take a look at the first one. That's apparently these two combined, right? That's sun and moon. That sun is the brightest stuff we could witness in the daylight, and the moon is apparently our only lightning choice in the night. That could mean bright, right? Look at the picture here. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. Let me put it here. And then for the second one, the left part somehow looks like a person leaning on the right part, which is a tree. That that matches this picture. Yeah, we sometimes do this actually. We lean on the tree to take a break during the hunting. For this one, I think the closest the character to the top part is this one. Although it looks a little bit different here and uh, the lower part is clearly this one small end or could this represent the mud as well so that could make sense that might be small mud which mean probably dust yeah let me put it here first for this one that looks like up and down combined but they share only one stroke in between that could be this look at it that could be something stuck in the middle of up and down. Yeah, which leaves this one for the last one. And how could men ask? That's the combination of door and mouse. Oh, that's it. That could be to that could be the person asking the direction. Where is the door? Yeah, problem solved. We are you are combining the existing characters and using them as a clue to refer to much more complicated meanings. That's genius. That's genius. That's compound ideograms. That's genius. We don't need to always create new ones, a brand new ones. We could use the existing ones to create much more characters. I think we're gonna have a bunch more characters for the next episode if we grasp this technique. So I think I'll see you in our next episode which is our last episode for the region of these characters. See you.